This is Terry McCall, a coordinator of football officiating for the American Athletic Conference. This is the next in our preseason series of training videos that focus on the points of emphasis that are listed in the 2014 NCAA Seven Man Mechanics Manual. This video on player and sportsmanlike conduct is a natural follow up to the video on sideline management and control previously posted. These two videos together are meant to stress the importance of managing the participants in such a way that we neither inhibit their ability to do their job nor infringe on their natural instinct to react with great emotion and excitement within the rules and spirit of good sportsmanship. At times this can be a tough line to draw but published guidelines and the guidelines in these two videos should allow for consistent enforcement in all games. For reference the following documents provide written guidance for consistent enforcement of unsportsmanlike fouls. The point of emphasis in the 2014 NCAA Seven Man Mechanics Manual, the updated unsportsmanlike conduct guidelines from the National Coordinator on the CFO website, and of course Rule 921A in the 2013-2014 NCAA rulebook. This video will break down unsportsmanlike conduct into two primary categories, celebratory actions and taunting actions. We're doing this because it appears that officials are treating them similarly when determining whether a foul has occurred. While they fall under, under the same section in the rule book, they are very different actions and must be adjudicated very differently. We will explain why. In recent years, officials have done an excellent job in using good common sense when determining whether a foul for prolonged or excessive celebratory acts has occurred. Officials no longer attack the players and now keep themselves at a reasonable distance to observe players' actions so they have a clearer overall view of the entire situation and allow players to react spontaneously to a great play that is within the rules. However, while officials have done a good job in enforcement, there is some concern that players are beginning to take liberties with current allowances and are moving toward actions that are more intended to show off or actions that bring disrespect to the game. For this reason, we have generated a list of automatic celebratory-like actions that we expect will be penalized without regard to game situation. This list is noted in Appendix F of the current Mechanics Manual and is meant to supplement, not replace, Rule 921A. Some items appear in the rule book and are included for completeness. This list is not extensive and we expect it will evolve as we move forward. These are the actions we consider automatic fouls. Other actions not listed here generally invoke the requirement for officials to use their judgment whether the act is prolonged or excessive, but we should recognize that there may be other situations or actions that are not listed that must be penalized immediately. The following plays demonstrate some of these actions that really do not belong in the game and we want penalized immediately. The first three will be clear and obvious throat slash actions. I'll watch the tackler after the play. One, actually two throat slashes. This is an automatic foul, regardless of game situation. We have an interception. And the player that intercepts the pass is going to give multiple throat slashes. The tackler again at the end of the play. And we see third and six. This is a big third down play. The throat slash is going to lead to an automatic first down. Dancing. We're starting to see a little bit more dancing. This is why we put this in the, uh, in the book. Doesn't matter how good or bad the dancing is, it is an automatic foul. Heisman pose at the end of a play. It doesn't matter how brief 
or how excessive or how prolonged it is. The Heisman pose is an automatic foul, which we'll see at the end of the play. Diving into the end zone. We haven't talked about it earlier in this video, but you've done an excellent job in determining uh, when this is a foul and when it's not. When the player is not threatened, he may not dive into the end zone, and that's what you're going to see here. He's going to do it from the field of play, which takes away a touchdown and is a foul. There is no threat, so he may not dive into the end zone. On this play, there is a threat and there is no foul. And just some actions that are perfectly legal. At the end of this play, the tackler is very excited. He's moving away from the, from the player he tackled, from the runner. This is a spontaneous, rea spontaneous reaction to a great play. No foul. On this touchdown play, the receiver is simply going to toss the ball somewhat up in the air, not with force, not high in the air, basically toward an official, not a foul. On this play, just a spontaneous reaction by the runner at the end of the play. Drops the ball, does not spike it. No foul. And then we do allow a very quick first down signal at the end of the play immediately. Not prolonged, as you'll see in this, in this instance. To summarize, there is little change to the guidance for determining when players have crossed the line and should be penalized. However, there are certain acts that must be penalized without warning. We believe that if officials are consistent in those areas and continue to use good judgment in determining whether actions are prolonged or excessive, then players will respond appropriately and there will be no need for significant changes to rules or guidelines. Taunting represents an entirely different type of action from celebratory actions. Celebrations are often as positive reactions by individuals and teammates that allow players to express a sense of pride in their efforts. Conversely, taunting actions are intended to, to demean and disrespect an opponent, and by extension, they demean and disrespect the game itself. There is much leeway in allowing players to express themselves in a positive manner. There is no leeway for taunting actions directed toward an opponent. Let me be perfectly clear, there is to be zero tolerance for taunting actions. We've made this a point of emphasis because in far too many cases, officials have either responded to taunting actions by talking to players or ignoring them completely. This video will make clear what constitutes taunting actions and that they are to be penalized without warning and without regard to game situation. Taunting actions most often re represent themselves as follows. Standing over an opponent. Clapping over or in, an in the face of an opponent. Pointing at an opponent or the opponent's bench. Getting in the face of an opponent. Tossing the ball at an opponent. These are visual clues that are obvious to everyone and must not go unpenalized. Note that we have pointedly used the word actions. We do this because verbal taunts can often be dealt with by warning as long as they don't cross the line of decency. For example, players jawing at each other as they walk away can most likely be dealt with using other means than an immediate flag. However, when one player is the clear aggressor and gets in the face of an opponent, then a foul would be justified. The following plays will demonstrate the types of actions that must be penalized without warning. At the end of this play, after a big hit at the sideline, the defender is going to step over and stand over his opponent. This is not a talk to. This is a foul without warning. The tackler again at the end of this play is going to walk over his opponent, staring down at him, foul without warning. This play we're going to see two actions. One is one that we believe is legal. The action by the tackler, number nine. Is, he's moving away, he's very excited. This looks like just a reaction to a good play. He's not standing over and taunting his opponent. If he did this over his opponent at, instead of backing away, it would be a foul. Number 34, however, is a foul. 
gets in his opponent face, walks over him. This is a foul without warning. This is taunting by number 34. Standing over an opponent. At the end of the play, number 26 goes right back at him, taunts his opponent. This is a foul. At the end of the play, we're going to have an interception in the bench area. Again, the tackler is going to get over his opponent. He's going to stand over him right there. This is a foul without warning. Taunting. See, what, this is what, the, what it generally creates when we allow something like that to occur. Unfortunately, many of these plays we're going to see were not penalized, and this is why we've made it a point of emphasis. Again, taunting actions over the opponent, claps at him as he gets up, staring at him, foul without warning. Taunting action. Muscle pose. Muscle pose in and of itself away from opponents is not necessarily a, an automatic foul unless it becomes prolonged or excessive. Doing it over an opponent is, is taunting and is a foul. Again, standing over an opponent. See number 19 at the end of the play. He gets up. He walks over him. This is the type of, this is what it creates. Now we're going to get in the face and clap in the face. This would also be a taunting foul. Clapping in the face of an opponent. This is not a talk to. This is a foul without warning. On this play, we're actually going to have four instances, four different players taunting. We have number 39. We have this player right here clapping over him. We have number 92. We have this player right here. So any one of those four could have been penalized for taunting. And, and certainly we would have been within your rights to penalize more than one player on that specific play. Getting in an opponent's face, the tackle is perfectly legal in bounds. Comes back and gets in his face. This is a taunting action. This is a foul without warning. At the end of this play, go to sleep. This signal right here is taunting. That's taunting an opponent and is a foul. Waving an opponent. Good tackle, legal tackle. Waving right here. This is a taunting foul. Don't think this is a taunting foul. He's just clapping for a good play. He's not doing it at an opponent. He's just clapping that his, uh, his teammate made a good play. That would not be a foul. Tossing the ball on an opponent. Receiver is going to make a, a catch for a touchdown. Would this, this standing over and bouncing over him would be enough for a foul. But then we're going to see he tosses the ball at the feet of the defender. That is a foul for taunting. At the end of this play, we're going to watch number 89. He's going to taunt the opponent's bench. The opponent's bench is over here. You're going to see him turn, face, and taunt the bench. That is a foul for taunting without warning. Again, taunting the opponent's bench. Right here, number 42. This is a foul and was correctly picked up on this play by the back judge, I believe. One more time, the taunting the bench at the end of the play. We're going to watch number 17. Again, this prolonged excessive, not necessarily at, at play here. This is taunting actions. It was quick. It is a foul for taunting. And the last clip we're going to show, there's a big hit on the runner, on the return man. And the, and the defender who, who makes the hit is going to come back at him, stand over him. This is a foul for taunting. We have to be alert to these types of actions. In summary, we must recognize the difference between the two categories of unsportsmanlike conduct that have been discussed. Celebratory actions, with the noted exceptions, allow for officials to use common sense and good judgment when determining whether players have violated the spirit and tenor of the rule. Taunting actions are absolute and there is no tolerance for violations by any player at any time. In all cases, set the tone early in the game if the situation arises. 
Ignoring it often leads to serious consequences as the game goes on. Remain diligent throughout each game and throughout the season. There are no exceptions for rivalries or bowl games. This video is intended to stress the seriousness of the Rules Committee and the coordinators of the importance of consistent enforcement of unsportsmanlike conduct by players. And we guarantee you have our full support in the implementation of these guidelines.